check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? 8.2. Derivatives of exponential functions. We want to find the derivative of an exponential function. That's where x is in the exponent position. And let's start with first principles. So if we put this into our formula 2, we have the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And we put in our function here. So b to the power of x plus h minus b to the power of x. And we can use our exponent rules and separate this out here. And then b to the power of x is actually independent. It has nothing to do with h anymore. And so we can factor it out and put it in the front. But it still leaves us with this big mess here. So it would really be nice if this limit would just equal 1. And then we would have the derivative of b to the power of x would just be b to the power of x. So what value of b, what value of the base, would make this limit equal to 1? We can use a numerical method. We can try the base as 2 and the base as 3 and then send h closer and closer to 0 here. And we can see that this expression here, uh, this one seems to get closer and closer to 0 0.69 and this one seems to get closer and closer to 0, well, 1.09 here. So we know that we need a b value that is somewhere in between 2 and 3, and looks like closer to 3. Turns out that the number here is e, 2.71, and it's an irrational constant, just like pi. Now this is sometimes called Euler's number, or Napier's constant, but it's not Euler's constant, that's something else. There's many ways to define and calculate e, you can check out this one here. Uh, it's an interesting document about how to calculate it, but for example, you can calculate it by doing this limit here. But we're not going to focus on the derivation of E or how to calculate it. What we're interested in is that if we have the derivative of E to the power of X, then we go through those same steps as we did before, and now this limit here does equal 1. So the derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. And if we have a function in our exponent position, we'll have to use the chain rule. e to the power of f of x is equal to e to the power of f of x. And then using the chain rule times the derivative of f of x. Now let's find the derivative of these ones here. So we can call this y prime. And we'll need the product rule for this one. So 2x times e to the x plus x squared times the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And if you'd like, you can do some factoring here, but I'll just leave it like this. Next one, y prime is equal to, well, 5, and the derivative of e to the power of 2x is e to the power of 2x times the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So this one would clean up as 10 e to the power of 2x. Let's find the derivative of these functions. So y prime would be equal to the derivative of cos is negative sine. Leave the inside alone. Now the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so we can just clean this up a bit. Well, reorder it. I suppose and that would be the derivative this one here we would need first the power rule bring the two down leave everything alone inside the brackets here and reduce the exponent by one then we'll take the derivative of the inside here so the derivative of e to the negative 2x is e to the negative 2x times the derivative of negative 2x which is negative 2. Now we can reorder this stuff here. Negative 4 e to the negative 2x and 
what's inside the brackets here. Find the absolute maximum value of y equals x times e to the power of negative x. So let's start off by taking the first derivative of this, and we'd need the product rule. So the derivative of x is 1, leave this alone, plus, leave the x alone, times the derivative of e to the negative x is just e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. So it looks like we have an e to the negative x and an e to the negative x that's common here. So we will factor that out and we'll be left with 1 minus x. Now I'm going to also uh, rewrite this just so that it's clearer. And I see that this has a negative exponent, so that is 1 over e to the x. And this is 1 minus x. And there's no non-permissible values here. e to the power of x is never going to equal 0, so that's not a problem. So we can set this equal to 0 to find our critical values. And none of them would come from here, so we're just looking at this little binomial here. And you can see that x equals 1 is our critical value. So let's use the first derivative test to determine if indeed this is a maximum. So I'll put 1 here, and I'll test x equals 0. And that would give me 1 minus 0, so that would just give me 1. So it's increasing before x equals 1. And then we'll test about x equals 2. And then we've got uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And e squared. And that's obviously positive, and so overall it's negative. So this is decreasing after x equals 1. So uh, indeed, x equals 1 will produce a maximum. And the question actually says to find the absolute maximum value. So we need to go back and put x equals 1 into this equation. And we get 1 over e is the maximum value. Example 4, we want to curve sketch y equals x to the power of negative x squared. So we'll start off by finding the domain. And it looks like we can put in any x value here and we won't cause any problems. So we'll say negative infinity to positive infinity in interval notation. Next, we want to find the intercepts, both x and y. So we'll say the y-intercept is probably the easiest one to find first, and that would just be when x is 0. So then we have e to the power of 0, and anything to the power of 0 there is 1. And our x-intercepts here, we could say uh, y equals 0 and try to solve this, but we're not going to be able to. There's no value of x that will ever make this into 0. So we'll say not equal and conclude that there are no x-intercepts. Next one would be symmetry. So that's where we put in a negative x, y equals e to the negative x squared. And the negative x is getting squared here, so it actually disappears and becomes the original equation again. So that means that there is even symmetry to this function. D would be asymptotes. And so I'll say the, I'll just check for horizontal asymptotes first. So I'll say the limit as x approaches. And I'll do positive and negative infinity at the same time because of even symmetry. 
what happens on one side will definitely happen on the other here. And just to make it easier, this is a negative x squared. So I'm just going to write it like this, and hopefully that helps me see where this is going. So e to the power of infinity down here in the denominator is going to be astronomically infinitely large. And 1 over that means that our limit is 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we can look for vertical asymptotes here as well, but since our domain is all real numbers, then there will be no vertical asymptotes. Let's move on to increase and intervals of increase and decrease. So for that, we will need the first derivative. So y prime is equal to the derivative of e to the negative x squared is just e to the negative x squared times the derivative of this exponent here, which is negative 2x. And let's rewrite this. Negative 2x is in the numerator. e to the x to the power of 2 is in the denominator. And we can see that there's no non-permissible values here, so we'll set it equal to 0 to find our critical values. This denominator isn't going to give us anything, so it's just the numerator that's going to give us x equals 0. So we'll do the first derivative test here, put 0 on our number line, and we will test x equals 1 in our derivative here, and that would be negative 2 over e. So that's negative overall. So that's decreasing in that interval there. And we'll test x equals negative 1. Or we could just think of symmetry here. It's even symmetry, so that's reflected in the y-axis. So this will be increasing on this side here. So our intervals of increase on negative infinity to 0 and decrease from 0 to infinity. Next up is our max and min. And we see that with this critical value here, we're going to have a maximum at x equals 0. So if I put, if I put 0 in, I get the y-intercept. And so that would be 0, 1. Next would be our concavity, where we will need our second derivative. So we'd have a negative e to the power of x squared plus 2x e to the power of x squared times the x derivative of x squared there, all over e to the power of x squared, all squared. And you can see here that every term has an e to the power of x squared, so we can get rid of that. There, there, and one of them here. And then that leaves us with negative 2 plus 4x squared all over e to the x squared. And maybe it would be easier if I factored out a 2 here. So 2 and I'll flip it around so we have x in the leading term. 2x squared minus 1 all over e to the x squared. That looks pretty good. So the denominator is not going to give me anything useful. It's just the numerator. So I'll set this equal to 0. And solve for x. And this and this one will be useless. So I'll just be doing zero equals 2x squared minus 1. And that'd be one half equals x squared to 
So that means that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 half. So now that we have our critical values of the second derivative, let's find our intervals of concavity. So this would be negative 1 over root 2. This would be positive 1 over root 2. We can test the middle one here. So let's test x equals 0 and in our derivative, and that would be 1, and that would be just negative 2. So this interval here will be concave down. Let's test this one here, and we can just test x equals 1, because that's greater than this 1 over root 2. And if we put 1 in here, we'll get uh, 2 and 2 over e. So that's positive. So that means that it is concave up in this interval here. And this interval, because of symmetry, this one would also be concave up. So we'll say concave up from negative infinity to negative 1 over root 2 and also concave up from 1 over root 2 to positive infinity and concave down in the interval between those two points. Now we'll find our inflection points because we have a point here and here where it's changing concavity. So our inflection points will have to put uh, this value into our original function. So that would have been e to the power of negative. And I'll just use the positive uh, because of symmetry, they'll both be the same y value. 1 over root 2 squared, which means this is e to the power of negative 1 half or 1 over root e. So my inflection points are plus or minus 1 over root 2 and 1 over root e. Now I'm ready to make a sketch of this. And my y-intercept was 1. And I was increasing before, decreasing after. My inflection point is uh, let's see, about uh, about here, I guess, and that would be here. And my horizontal asymptote would have been running along y equals zero, and I'm concave up before, and that makes sense coming up here, and then concave down to hit my maximum and then concave up again. So I snuggle up to my horizontal asymptote as I go off to positive and negative infinity. And that would be my sketch. You should be able to find the derivatives of exponential functions when the base of the exponent is e. Try these questions out to see if you know what you're doing.